This is E2900, week 7, lecture 2, Dr. Bharatwaj Bhatmuthu Swami recording. So today what we're going to do is we're going to finish uh, designing our ripple carry adder in terms of generates in the sense last time we left off is we declared this generic n-bit full adder that is going to instantiate n uh, copies of our one-bit full adder. So in preparation for that, I have uh, removed from my top level the declaration, the component declaration of my one-bit full adder. So what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate this one-bit full adder inside this component using the for generate statement. So recall our little picture here. So this is what we're going to do. So my top level now is uh, pretty clean because we remember we have uh, the last couple of lectures we already tested our seven segment decoder and our one bit full adder and confirm that it works and go confirm that they work. So let's start. Uh, create a new VHDL file for our generic n bit full adder. So let me do our usual library declaration. If you do this enough times, like these library declarations and stuff, you can do this in your sleep. Okay, component, but now this becomes an entity. Okay. So entity. Uh, and entity. Now the component, uh, so the architecture is going to be architecture, generate architecture of generic n bit full adder is begin and generate architecture architecture so now what we're going to do is we're going to declare a component here and if you don't remember this component declaration for the one bit full adder then you can just open this up copy the entity and make it a component that's what i usually do so let's close this uh, oops let's make this a component remember to periodically save and it's asking me what to save this as and this is the generic n bit full adder dot vht now notice that it put the file at the end it'll be nice like i mentioned last lecture to put this like put a hierarchy here so you understand what instantiates what so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do it this way that is the ripple carry adder instantiates the generic full adder which instantiates the one bit full adder and then finally the output is given is obtained by using seven segment decoders so just to get so this shows that you understand what's going on okay so let's make this a component and now recall that from last time i mean i have the block diagram open here so we're going to make these carries uh, as internal signals so what we're going to do is go back in here and declare an internal carry signal call it carry internal signal carry internal is going to be standard logic vector now again we have parameterized bit length okay so we need n minus 1 internal carry signals okay so think bit length is 5 we have four internal carry signals right but in the uh, actually, in this case, what we're going to have, let's say, again, recall from my in-class lectures that if you don't understand in case of n what's going on, use numbers for n. Right now, we're used doing n equals 5. We're doing a 5-bit adder, and that's exactly what is over here. So what we have is actually 1, 2, 3, 4 internal carry signals, but the way I've done it here is I'm going to get 0, 4 down to 0, so a total of 5 carry internals, but, but, I'm going to consider, or I'm going to map my C out from my carry internal signal, as you're going to shortly see. Okay. So let's now just go with this, and let's start um, looking at our generate architecture. This, uh, the reference for the generate architecture is in appendix of your book, I forgot if it's A or B, uh, the VHDL appendix one of your book, in your book. Uh, so it's actually pretty simple. In the sense, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say generate adders. Okay, so this is what is called as the generate label, right? 
So for I, I'm going to start in bit zero to bit length minus one, generate, okay? So uh, basically, my bit length is five. I'm going to generate zero through four adders. Again, go back to this picture. One, two, three, four, five. Total of zero, one, two, three, four. Total of five adders, zero through four. Okay. So I'm going to have n full adders. Is instance is a one bit full adder. So this is what I'm going to do. I mean, let's do a port map. Okay. So my C in is going to become my carry internal of i okay so again vhdl is strongly typed carry internal is of type standard logic vector so this carry internal of i is standard logic which is the type of ci but what is carry internal of i so when n when i is 0, you want carry internal of 0 to be my input carry. Yes, C in. And this uh, C in here is basically this fellow. Okay, we're going to set it to 0 at the top level when we instantiate this generic n bit full adder. Likewise, so let's keep going with this in the sense my C X I is going to be X in bits of I. My Y, this is what I called it. Let's see. X in bits, Y in bits. So my Y I is going to be Y in bits of I. My C next is going to be carry internal of I plus 1. So now you can see that I did make an error here in the sense when I go to bit length minus 1, I'll get to bit length. So this has to be bit length. And like I spoke earlier, now it makes sense because I'm basically going to have a total of 0, well, z um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, hmm. See, no, no, that's what it is. So this is the, my internal carry of zero. There you go. That makes sense. So this one right here is my carry internal of zero. Okay, so that makes sense. So I have zero, one, two, three, four, five right there. So this makes sense now. And then my sum, which is SI, is going to be some bits. Of i, okay. But now, and then I have to do an n generate here. In order to make sense of this, that is, I have to say that my c out, my output carry is going to be carry internal of bit length, okay. Again, please plug in numbers for bit length if you don't understand this. Specifically, bit length equals five, right? So to recap. I have the internal carry from 0 through 5 because my carry 0 is my C in, my carry 5 is my C out, and correspondingly, I can do my generates from 0 to bit length minus 1 to obtain this beautiful description of a ripple carry adder. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the top level and we're going to instantiate this. Okay, And again, you have to test module by module. So let's just, uh, as we instantiate this, so uh, this is... Uh, n bit full adders is going to be generic n bit full adder first now we don't need a port map we need a generic map that is we got to tell what is our bit length so our bit length is going to be five no commas or anything here because we need like a port map next okay so there it is let's start port mapping this so we need x in bits is going to be sw four down to zero five bits okay my y in bits is going to be SW9 down to 5. Again, I recommend recommend that you parameterize the constants below. Okay. Uh, so, for example, what you can 
do is you can do something like, okay, well, think about it, right? I'm gonna let you think about it. How do you, that is, how do you parameterize this five here? Uh, so nine down to five, and then let's see x in bit, c in is going to be zero. My c out is going to be my carry out. For this, I need a signal. So let me call signal c out is standard logic, okay? But then I also need some bits is going to be standard logic vector, uh, bit length minus one down to zero, okay? So, and then I'm gonna do some bits is bit length, whoops, what am I doing? Some bits, there you go, okay? So now in order to actually synthesize, here is a test for synthesis, okay? I'm gonna take my LED G four down to zero, send my sum bits to it, and I'm gonna send my LED G five to C out, okay? So this way we actually have some synthesis. Let's do a control K, chain one has been modified, yes, save it, and then let's see what happens. We'll address, oops, we'll address any errors. That, oh yeah, this right clicking here, you can go to template again and look at this generic maps and these parameterizations. So, and hopefully I do make some errors here so we can figure out how I fix the errors. But like I referred to, like I discussed last lecture, just pay attention to your errors and definitely also to your warnings. So understand where they're coming from. It's not that difficult. Quartus, there is again, nothing wrong with quartus. And oh, so it looks like, oh good, I made errors. So let's see what errors I made. So text in generate expecting end. Uh, so blah, blah, blah. So let's double click on the first error. Uh, what did I do? One bit. Mm -mm -mm. So n bit full adders, port map, syntax error near four. Expecting, oh, uh, let's see. Oh, never mind. So I, this is the mess. So I declared here, this should be these wires, come on, should be declared out here. Let's fix that. So let's do a control key again. Uh, so this is a good example, just pay attention, right? It's really hard to miss the fact that these wires should not, I mean, there's just a label. It should not be right after the label, right? So, and of course, fixing these errors might fix the subsequent errors. All right, so that's good. So we have one error and, oh, and generate architecture semicolons missing. So hopefully those are the only errors. So let's do an analysis and synthesis and look at the RTL view and see if we get this structure. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. No, bit length is used but not declared. Uh, let's see, ripple carry adder, bit length. So again, I thought I parameterized this, I didn't. So this should be four. So let's do this again. I didn't do parameterize it because I left it up to you. Uh, so for a single x1, x0, uh, I removed all that. So now let's just again check if this RTO view uh, synthesizes the proper specification of our hardware, which is a five bit triple carry adder. So it looks pretty good. See in this ground, so four to zero, and you can see it's tapped to zero, one, two, three, four, five. So very, very nice structure, and you can go into any one of these and look at our one bit for ladder. Okay, so now we have verified the RTL view, at least visually. What we should, we can go ahead and do is assemble it, download it to the FPG on the DE1, and check if the LEDs show the right result. But due to lack of time, obviously, in this lecture, like I said, I'm gonna make the lecture around 20 minutes. 
I only five more minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, outputting. So I'm going to start using the hex displays. So a couple of things, right? So what we need is, let me just write this as comments. For the hex displays, we need to extract the digits, uh, tens and units from our sum, okay? Note that our sum, our maximum sum will be 62, correct? If we include the carry out, okay? Therefore, our output, um, so it's basically checking for overflow, right? So it carry out. So overflow, okay? So this is what we're going to do. So first, I'm going to comment that note that design includes overflow, okay? Design accounts for overflow. In the sense, I'm basically going to say my sum some bits, so my signal C out concatenated with some bits is going to be a 5-bit standard logic vector. Sorry, 6-bit standard logic vector. Let me find out the 6 now. There. Okay? So in the sense, here as well to keep it consistent so here so it's going to be C out concatenated with some bits uh, there I'm going to do it so we can have a six bit result okay now what we need to is we need to extract the units the tens and units digit because the tens digit is going to go on our hex zero. So let's call that, well, let's do units display. Is I think we called it seven segment decoder port map. Okay. So my input integer, we'll extract that shortly, but uh, let me make sure input integer hex out, seven segment decoder is all is good. Input integer is going to be tens digit. No, no, what am I saying? Units digit. Uh, my hex out is going to go to hex zero, okay? And my tens display is going to involve the tens digit, okay? And I need to declare both of these signals. I'll do so shortly. Okay. So input integer again is going to be tens digit. Hex out, hex one. Okay. Then I'll erase the parentheses down here. Okay, so I need these two signals now, units digit and tens digit. Let's do that. That is, let's declare these two signals. I think I had like something called sum. No, I deleted that as well. Uh, that is, I had an integer signal, but that's not a big deal. Just a signal, units digit, tens digit. is going to be integer range 0 to 10, okay? Uh, but basically, the idea is divide a number by 10, remainder is, let's see, you have 26, divide by 10, quotient is 2, remainder is 6, so remainder is the units digit, uh, so number 0 to 62, remainder is units digit, quotient is tens digit. So I'm going to use division. So what I'm going to do is I need to first convert, like I did last lecture, some integer is going to be two integer unsigned of C out cat sum bits. Okay. So I need to declare a sum integer. Signal sum integer is integer range 0 to 62. So now that I have this integer concatenated, what I can do is I can say my units digit is some integer. The VHDL operation uh, or the keyword for remainder is rem, 10. And the tens digit is going to be some integer divide by 10. 
Let me just do a quick control K. And unfortunately, I'm at the 20 minute mark. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, if there are any errors, we'll address them. I'm going to pass the lecture, download the design to the board, and then check if the design works. So hopefully, this analysis and synthesis procedure finishes pretty quickly. Okay, so it's just starting. <laughs> Come on. Uh, this time I don't want any errors. I used to welcome errors, but we're out of time. So, oh, super, 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 super. So, and you can see that you should pay attention to the uh, messages. So, it's using an LPM, library of parameterized modules divide function. Okay, and if you go into the compilation report, uh, let's see. So it's going to use a lot more uh, logical. It's not that much more, but anyway, that's it. Okay, this is good. So there are no errors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble it, download it, and then I'll be back. I'm already over 20 minutes. Sorry about that, but bear with me for just a half more. Okay, continuing. So yeah, the design synthesized. It actually doesn't use that much uh, logical at all. Download it to the FPG on the D1 board, and I wish you could see this. It's working beautifully in the sense I've set all the switches to high. So I'm doing 31 plus 31, I'm getting 62, okay? So that's one corner case. The other corner case is obviously zero. That's what I'm testing right now. That also works. So as you know, or hopefully know from your other um, like programming classes, you gotta test corner cases like, well, the overflow 31 plus 31, it should give you 62 and it does. So corner cases are the Achilles heel of any design. So I'm testing that and yeah, it works really well. I'm just doing, for example, um, 16 plus 7. I'm getting 23 on the DE1 board. Okay, that's about it for this lecture. So, again, I'll post this uh, reference design on the lecture notes and videos, under lecture notes and videos. So, please go take a look. And so, I'll write it here. For those of you watching the video, posted on appropriate folder. So I believe it's E20. Uh, uh, let me just do this harpgroup.org slash lecture notes and videos. I should have done this winter 13 14. Okay. So reference design. Post it on there. Let me make sure the website's right. And then we'll call, we'll quit the lecture. But yeah, please practice. Combinational design using VHDL is very simple, and this example I did is probably the most intricate of combinational logic design. So, so yeah, it'll be posted here. But yeah, next time, what we're going to do is what we should have done is so that we should we should have performed a functional simulation of this design. That's exactly what we're going to do next. That is, uh, we're going to check using model sim. So I think I have it on my desktop. So here it is. Uh, so please install this model to Altera uh, starter edition for Cordis 2.13.0 Service Pack 1. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to test the functional simulation, and I'll see you next time.